Hello, welcome back to uh, Journaling with Kim. Today it's a different video from what I normally would do. So I thought I would try something different today. Uh, instead of doing an unboxing or a process video, I am going to be sharing some of the resources that I use when uh, doing my Bible studies. I also use some of these resources with my kids. We, we homeschool. Um, these are two of the resources that I use in our school room when we're doing Bible, but I also use them in my studies as well. This first one is called 500 Questions and Answers from the Bible um, by Mark Frackle. I love this one because, again, it's a few questions that my kids have asked that I could come to this resource and get some answers if it's something that we are, myself, I'm not sure about. And it's very user-friendly for them to go and do some reading on their own. Uh, so let's see, where did the universe come from? And it's broken down in books. So um, you could just go to the books of the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, and you could get your questions or see what questions they have and what answers they provide. They also give you the scripture reference where they would get that question from. This was um, helpful for me because I'm doing the Bible recap, reading through the Bible in a year, and it has some beautiful illustrations and visuals that goes along with, especially when we were doing uh, the book of Exodus and Leviticus, which was a doozy for me. A lot of rules about the, not rules, but, you know, their processes about the feast and the tabernacle and how it was built. So, yes, this is one. Again, it is set up with the different books of the Bible, Old and New Testament. This is another good one, the Complete Guide to the Bible. One of my reasons um, for liking this one is it goes through each book of the Bible, tells you the main points, who was the writer, when it was written, what location or the setting of it is, and then it gives you a quick breakdown of what that chapter is about or what that book is about. Again, beautiful illustration. It does break down the family tree of Abraham, beautiful maps, and it's very colorful. As I said, these two first books are what I use in my uh, when we're homeschooling, and it's pretty easy and simple with beautiful graphics, bright colors, uh, so my 11-year-old and my 6-year-old can go through and do their own uh, reading and research. So I love this. So as I said, with each book, it gives you a summary and a breakdown as well as the main point, who was the author when it was written and the setting of where it was written. This was a... Uh, this one I picked up in Hobby Lobby, I think. Yes. And I am totally in love with this. As someone who is seeking to deeper my insights into the Bible, its history and its teaching, and who like beautiful visuals, this is a, a great recommendation. I love its comprehensive approach to presenting both um, it has a timeline of world history, Bible history, and Middle East history. It's actually a flip out, as you can see. And it's on both sides. Well, on the other side, you have a beautiful illustration of the tabernacle. 
I, of course, love, love, love this timeline. It starts off with a quick Bible overview, which gives you all the books of the Bible, uh, tells you what literary device they are, whether it's historical, poetry. Again, this also tells you who the author was, or it answers those five W questions, who, what, where, when, why. It gives you an outline, the key verse. So that's how it starts off with both Old and New Testaments. And then we go into these beautiful, beautiful graphics. Again, here's that timeline. It's breaking it down with some more information. One of my uh, favorite things in this is that it does give you the names of God, the names of the Holy Spirit. But 52 key Bible stories. And if you have kids, I like to expose my kids to these wonderful stories. So I like that it gives me a breakdown for that. Then it does give you a Christian history timeline. Or, sorry, I forgot to tab my pages. Um, 100 proofs for the Bible. So it goes through with the Bible uh, book by book giving you different uh, description of archaeological finds that does prove the Bible exists. And then it gives you a history timeline. So if you're someone who is uh, an avid reader or not even a reader, but someone who likes to get background information while you're studying, this is a wonderful resource. Again, it gives you the Christian timeline. And then we start going into the books of the Bible. So it has these gorgeous graphics as I talked about. This is Noah's Ark. And it just gives you that nice visual. Again, it gives you the timeline of when it happened. The them entering the ark it rained for 40 days but they were also in the ark for those days after the the rain where the water receded and it does give you that timeline as well um, then we get to the tabernacle and it breaks down the parts of the tabernacle what they were used for as well as the priestly garment so, um, again, just beautiful resource for when you're studying. There are also maps. And what I love about the maps at the back is that it gives you the map then as it was in the biblical time and how it is now. So I love this part as well. Holy Land then and now the divided kingdom. So yes. So um, definitely recommend this resource for anyone who is seeking to deepen in their understanding of the Bible. Bible, yes. Who is a visual learner who likes to see the colors and the items come to life highly recommend my other two resource that i love to use is my commentary now this is not the only commentary i like but this is the physical copy that i do have so sometimes i like to use a physical copy as opposed to going online because sometimes i don't know about you but for me, I go online to search for one thing and I get distracted and I go down rabbit holes that I don't need to be. So sometimes I do like having a physical hard copy to go to. So this is the Tony Evans Bible Commentary. 
Now, a uh, Bible commentary, it's a scholarly or theological work, and it provides explanations and interpretations and insights into the text of the Bible. It typically accompanies the biblical text, so it does tell you, you know, chapter and verse that they're given the explanation for. And it offers commentary on individual verses, passages, or entire books of the Bible altogether. So um, commentaries, they often draw from historical, cultural, linguistic, theological knowledge. So all that goes into play when they're doing these commentaries. Um, I like this commentary because it gives you the introduction to each book. So tell you the author it gives you a historical background what's the message in that book or what was the purpose of that book being written and it gives you an outline so for instance if you're looking at Ruth it says um, from chapters 1 verse 1 to 22 it's disappointment then chapters 2 1 to 23 it's service then hope then redemption so it breaks that down for you and there's also a QR code that you could scan, and that will take you to a video of Dr. Tony Evans giving you an intro background of that particular book. Then, of course, it goes in and it does give you that breakdown of verse by verse commentary. So this is another one of my go-to and this is another recent edition. It's a Bible dictionary. So yes, some words you can find in a regular dictionary, but I do like the biblical definition of those words at time. Again, beautiful illustrations. Typical layout of a Bible, sorry, of a dictionary. It is in alphabetical order. So Whatever word you're looking for, you just need to go to that alphabet and do your search. And it gives you a nice definition of the words in its biblical context. It also gives you the Greek words as well. The only thing that's missing would be the, well, not the Greek word itself, even though some Even though some entries will give you a uh, reference to its Greek, Hebrew, or Aramaic reference. Like, for instance, Hosanna, it says that it does give you the definition of Hosanna along with the pronunciation. Uh, one place where it was used, Mark 11, verse 9, um, it says Hosanna is a Hebrew or Aramaic word that is best translated as a prayer, save now or save we beseech thee. So, again, can I find a biblical dictionary online? Yes, but I do like to have a physical copy. One, sometimes when you get online to research things, as I said, I will get distracted and I will be doing something else that I shouldn't be doing. I'm working on that, praying on that. And I'm also trying to teach my kids, 11, 6, and the 4-year-old, how to use these resources and how to get into the Word of God, how to better understand His Word. Um, but with all these resources, I always, always pray and ask. You know, the Lord says if, any of you lack wisdom, James 1, 5 to 8, to ask. So before I even open my Bible to read, to study, I'm asking for clarification. I'm asking for his wisdom on just to discern his word, to understand his word and what he is seeing or what he's trying to see. So, um, and then these are, what I use afterwards. So let me know down in the comments if you have any of this, any of these resources, if you use them, 
and what are your recommendations or suggestions for some other resources for me to add to my my library thank you for watching and keep journaling